Number two is a movie I saw in the theaters, and you may guess it by my previous movie choices, but I saw The Invisible Man. Um, I saw it last... Uh, I saw it Monday night. Um, I saw it Monday night in Dolby. Um, it was really enjoyable. Um, I was a little... I was doubtful. Uh, one thing, the, the, the title, The Invisible Man, kind of sounds stupid. Um, and the trailer, they, they revealed so much in the trailer that I kind of knew what happened already. And I was like, why would they tell me this much? They, they like killed a lot of the, the wonder and the mystery of what's going on. Um, however, it was still very good. Um, I really, I really liked it. It's my favorite movie of the year so far. Just say that right off the bat. New movie that came out in the theaters, obviously. My favorite one by far. Um, beating out, actually, believe it or not, Fantasy Island was my favorite one. So it's been a pretty shitty year so far. But this this is a this is uh of just a genuinely good movie. Um, the acting of the the actress was excellent. I don't remember her name either. I'm really bad with names. I need to get better with names. Um, but it seems like no, not Bloom. That's the girl from Quiet Place, I think, who's also gorgeous, but I forget her name. But anyway, uh, the acting is excellent. It's actually a movie about, like, domestic abuse, really, is what it is. Uh, she is just, you know, controlled by this guy. Um, this guy, he's a uh, op op optometrist. I can't remember. I think he's like an eye doctor or something. Not a doctor. I don't know what he does. He's like a scientist or something. But I, I think he specializes on optics, which is eyes. Um, and he's like, this dude is rich. Like, the opening scene is... I'm like, damn, this house is fucking sweet. They're sleeping in a big-ass house. And they have, like, these big windows. And you can look right out into the ocean. And then it was storming that day. I was like, that is fucking awesome. There's a storm... Waves crashing up and shit. Excuse me. Um, thunder cracking and pouring rain. It was just a really cool opening scene. And, you know, the opening scene is her trying to escape from him. So she's laying in bed with him. And he's got his arm over her and all. She's just, she's awake staring at the clock. And it hits like three something. I guess that's when she was going to go. Uh, she apparently drugged him. Um, packed all her things. Or, well, she actually already had them packed. But she's shuffling around the place and... Um, you know, you're, you're holding your breath and you're gripping the seat, uh, cause every little step is, you know, you're paying attention to every little detail, uh, because you know, right off the bat that from the trailer, really, that this guy is insane. Um, at one point she kicks a dog bowl and the bowl f flies at the screen and it's so loud cause obviously she was trying to be quiet the whole time. Um, it's dark and quiet, and it's this bowl was so loud sliding at you, and I literally flipped in the theater. My friend, I was there with me and two friends, and we all were like, Bleh! it was fucking crazy, and we're like, oh, it's a fucking dog bowl, relax. <laughs> um, uh, and she's, you know, shuffling around the apartment, she gets all, or the, the, the mansion, excuse me, she gets all of her stuff. As she's leaving, she finds a dog, um, the dog... It doesn't bark or anything, but it, it like makes that like noise or whatever. And she doesn't take the dog because I guess the big, uh, she can't. I don't know. She's not gonna throw it over a giant gate, <laughs> so I guess she leaves the dog. And uh, she's like taking off the shock collar of the dog, and its butt bumps one of his cars, and the shit goes off. And then she just bursts, like climbs over the the gate through the woods, and she's waiting for her sister. Um. Her sister finally shows up. As soon as she gets there, jumps in the car, and her sister's like, why am I here? Why am I here? I'm like, bitch, step on again. <laughs> like, what the fuck? I don't care. Why do you have to explain why you're here? If, if your sister says, pick me up in the fucking middle of the night, like, just do it. Don't ask questions while you're there. Obviously, there's something wrong. <laughs> just fucking drive the car. And she's like, what? What's going on? I'm like, bitch, fucking pedal to the metal. This dude is on his way. Something bad is happening. You know what I mean? Drive the car. Um... You didn't ask questions before you were asked to come and pick me up at 3.30 in the morning? <laughs> like, what the fuck? Um, so she's like dilly-dallying, and he punches the window out, and then she finally slams on the gas and bursts out of there. And, um, so the main actress goes to a friend of theirs' uh, house and just, like, stays there. 
um, afraid that this guy's going to find her, I guess. He's a cop, which is helpful. I don't know if I just said that or not, but he's a cop. Um, and she's, like, you know, terrified to even go outside um, because this guy, you know, he was abusive to her. He was, in, in, like, obsessed with her, controlling, um, you know, all, not all nine yards, whatever the phrase is, the whole nine yards. Um, and she, you know, her confidence is shot and she is just basically dysfunctional. Um, the smallest sound, she goes outside to get the mail and somebody's jogging by and she freaks out and runs in the house thinking it's him. You know, this guy was just in her head, messed her up hard. Um, and then she gets the news that he killed himself, apparently. Um, obviously, uh, we, wait, do we know about the suit? Now I'm trying to, I guess we technically didn't know about the suit. So... I mean, I guess we didn't really know about the suit. She, well, the movie kind of gives it away where she's, when she's leaving, she looks at this, like, thing that would hold a suit, but there's not a suit there. Obviously, the movie's called The Fucking Invisible Man, so you'd probably think there's an invisible suit there. So I think, actually, yeah, no, the movie gives it away. Um, but he kills himself, apparently. Slits his wrists and bleeds out. Um, and... You know, she he gives her all like five million dollars, I think it was, and um, you know she's still freaking out. She's not a hundred percent. Well, actually, I think she's actually over it at that point for the most part. Um, but then she starts seeing things like uh, there's a scene where the ch there there's a chair in the room and like it's pressed down. Um, it's not the scene from the trailer where she's like, he's sitting right there. It's not that scene. It's a different scene where the chair, there's, the chair is pushed down. Um, there's breath behind her. She's outside and, and it's like cold and she's breathing and there's, you know, her, you can see her breath and then there's one behind her as well. Um, and you know, it's the invisible man, the guy in the suit because the movie blew its load early. Um, and, uh, you know, there's parts where like she wakes up and, and like she wakes up from to flashes and then, like, the blanket's pulled off of her. She goes to get the blanket. She tries to pull the blanket, and it won't move. And it's because the fucking dude's standing on the blanket. <laughs> and then she rips it out, and she hears, like, bam, 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 and he falls. Um, and, you know, like, they don't believe her. They think she's, like, still, you know, messed up from the, the fucking boyfriend. And they don't really believe her. And um, at one point, like, this is where the movie just goes off the rail. Not off the rails in a bad way, just, like, you know, fuck it, <laughs> you know what I mean, he, she's talking to, um, the cop's daughter, the cop has a daughter, um, and, you know, she knows she's messed up, and the daughter's like, look, let's forget all about this, let's have a girl's night or whatever, let's watch the movies, eat cake, I think she was saying, and out of the left field, the girl just gets clocked by air, <laughs> and, you know, obviously, because the girl was the only one in the room, she thought that the main actress fucking punched her or something. And she's like, Dad, she hit me! And, and then the dad comes in and he takes her and he's like pissed and he takes her and leaves the house. And she's in there by herself. It's kind of stupid. Um, this movie, you need to have um, a pretty high threshold of... of um, sus uh, what's it called? Um, suspense of disbelief. No, you know what I'm trying to say. Suspension of disbelief, that's what I was trying to say. Um, because she was not in any position to hit the girl at the time. So how the girl, I mean, I guess, because she's literally the only one in the room. Maybe the girl, like, turned her head or something. I, I'd have to watch the scene again. But it, it didn't look like, you know, she could logically have hit the girl. Um, and, she, you know, so that's kind of, like I said, you have to have a high suspension of dis disbelief. Um, but... You know, after all things are said, the, she's in the house alone. Um, she's, like, challenging the thing, the guy. And eventually he just, like, shows himself. And he starts, like, fucking beating the shit out of her and, like, strangling her and holding a knife. And at the same time, um, she's, like, be like smacking him with pans. And, like, it's making the bang noise. And she's, like, breaking plates on him and shit. And he throws her across the room. Um, apparently... The dude turns into Triple H when he's invisible. I don't know. He's not really that. I mean, he's maybe cut, but he's not, like, huge or anything. He's not a fucking bodybuilder, but he's throwing her across the fucking room and holding her up with one arm. 
Um, she probably weighs like a buck thirty-five, but still, that's a lot to hold somebody with one arm up. Um, this dude must be secretly jacked. I don't know, but um, yeah, he basically beats the shit out of her, and she escapes uh, the house, gets an Uber, and <laughs> drives all the way to fucking the dude's mansion. And I'm like, why are you going back there? What is the point? And then she goes back there, and she finds another invisible suit. So she knew about the fucking invisible suit, apparently, because uh, she went all the way to the house to get another one of them. There's, there was one where she suspected, I guess, when, you, when the camera panned and, like, focused on the thing where the suit would be, but obviously it's a fucking invisible suit, so you don't see it. She went there, got the suit, um, and got back in the fucking Uber and drove back home. Um, the dude was in the house. He followed her. I don't know how he got there. I don't know if he was in the Uber with her or if maybe he got on... I don't know how the fuck he got there, honestly, but... Or maybe he was there already because it, it turns out that half the time it was the guy's brother the whole time had another suit and he was doing some shit too. So maybe he was actually there the whole time and he saw her walk in, but... Or one of them did. Um, but, uh... She gets the, the suit and it's going to be proof, right? So she, her sister the whole time is like, oh, my God, what the fuck is going on with you? And he actually sends her an email like, oh, I don't want to – in her, obviously, through her name on her laptop or whatever, saying, like, I don't want to be – I don't want to know you anymore. I, like, we're done or whatever the fuck. Just like a – not a breakup email, but like a I'm done with you type email. And so she's pissed and doesn't believe her and thinks she's going crazy. And uh, So she's bringing this suit, I guess, for proof to show that she's not insane. To her sister, she takes her to a public area. It's like a, uh, a Chinese restaurant or Asian restaurant, I think. And there's like people all around, and uh, they're talking. And as soon as she's about to reveal the suit, the fucking knife. There's a knife floating in front of her, um, and the girl's like, her sister's like, "What the?" And then the knife swings, thing slices her neck, and then goes right into the main actress's hand. And she's was framed for murder. It it was like that, and the punching the 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 daughter was like what the fuck. Both times I was like holy shit, because like they did it really well. Where you you know there's parts in horror movies normally like when you know you can relax, and then there's parts where you're like you know like once something happens, usually at least in the beginning of the movie or middle, beginning to middle, when something happens, you can kind of chill after that, because it's be like, oh, it must have just been that, or, oh, she's in a safe area now, she's with other people, and you're just like, kind of like, oh, well, no, in this movie, twice they do it, where you're like, oh, fuck, <laughs> I was chilled out, and you're like, fucking slicing necks out here, you wouldn't have not expected it at all, it was awesome, um, nasty, but awesome, and she's framed for murder, um, she's taken to a fucking, uh, insane asylum, um, being questioned by cops and shit, and, you know, then it turns out the brother, who's a lawyer, um, and was, like, handling his will and everything, um, he, he basically intentionally spills the beans to her and says, like, all this can go away, I can get you out of this murder, but you have to come, go back with him, and you're, I don't think, oh, somebody else told her she was pregnant, but she was pregnant with his kid. Uh, she had been, she thought she was taking birth control, but she was actually taking, like, I don't know, some other shit, uh, that he swapped out. He knew that she was taking birth control to avoid having his kid, so he put, like, some other pill or something, and, um, she, she got pregnant with his kid, uh, and the, the, the lady at the fucking, um, insane asylum told her that, uh, and the lawyer knew too, so he was like, "But you have to. You this can all go away, but you have to go back with him and raise his kid, or something like that." And uh, you know, she flips out and says no, and and then like you know, well, oh, all right, well, what's it gonna be? Uh, uh, an established lawyer's word or a psycho's word who just murdered somebody? You know what I mean? So like, he can pretty much say whatever he wants. They're not gonna believe her. Um, and uh, yeah, so then she she's going to kill herself. Because she doesn't want to have his kid. It's actually like a, uh, it's a fake out. Uh, but she's going to uh, cut her wrist with a pen that she stole from the lawyer. Um, and then he's in the room with her and, and it, as an invisible costume, obviously. And he, he's like grabbing a knife. And she's like, there you are. And she just fucking stabs him with the pen like four times. And it messes up his suit. 
So, like, it's kind of flickering in and out. Um, and his suit, by the way, kind of looks like those fucking enemies in Suicide Squad. Those generic, weird-looking enemies that they don't go into at all. Why the fuck they look like that? Um, but, uh, it kind of looks like that. It kind of looks like, um, the fucking, the, uh, in Smash Bros. Brawl, when you have to fight those, like, I guess, mannequin people. Kind of looks like that. Also, just mannequins. <laughs> um, I don't know why, just, whatever. Uh, and it's flickering in and out, right? Um, so... She, how does it, how does it work? Oh, uh, uh, one of the security guards comes in and, and uh, tries to, like, calm her down because he, he, obviously, he's flickering in and out, but he, the, the guy can't see him at first, and she, he opens the door, and he's like, relax, relax, and then he ends up, I, th I forget if he knocks him out. I think he just knocks him out or tases him or something. I think he tases him. Excuse me. And she gets out. He's out, and she's chasing him, trying to... She gets his gun. I th Does she have the gun? I don't know if she has the gun at this point, but she's chasing him, and... Um, then there's, like, ten other cops that show up, like, two by two. Like, it's a fucking video game. Like, you beat two of them, two more show up. <laughs> but, uh, you know, he ends up, like, either knocking all of them out, or he might kill, like, one or two of them. I think he only... I don't think he kills any of them, honestly. He doesn't... It's not his, his motive is to kill people, but... Um, he knocks, like, all of them out. He, he gets one, and he shoots himself. You, it looks like, but it's really, you know, the other guy's holding his gun and shoots himself in the leg. Um, you know, it, it's it's really cool, because they're, like, getting beaten up by nothing, and they're like, Whoa. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Pretty cool fight scenes. Um, and then, you know, she's continues to chase him. She's uh, There's a gun right next to her. She doesn't grab it. Like I said, suspension of disbelief is a trope. You know, she could have easily gotten the gun and, and shot at the general vicinity, but she doesn't. Um, then she's outside, and the invisible guy, it's raining and shit, so I'm like, oh, it's, the rain's gonna hit the suit, and you're gonna be able to see, but that they don't do that. He's hiding under a fucking, uh, like, the trunk or the tailgate of an SUV. He's under it, and, um, you know, uh, somehow, oh, I think he, like, punches her or something, and then he runs and steals a car and drives off. And, uh, how did she know? I forget how she knew this, but, uh, she was told by, I don't know if it was the brother or the actual guy that he, he was going to make the girl. Oh, it must've been the brother. I think it was his brother was going to basically kill the, the girl, the cop's daughter. So she fucking like chases them down the street and shit. And then there's this, the, I guess... It's a little bit of a blip in the movie where she's, you know, in like a car chase with him and then she shows up at the house, but he's not there. Uh, and the, but there's an invisible guy there, but the, the car that she was chasing isn't there. I, I don't know if she lost trail of him or what. I don't know what happened there, but she gets to the house. Uh, you know, the invisible guy whose suit is not fucked up anymore, which would make you, you know, it makes sense now that, oh, it was the brother. Um, He's beating the shit out of the cop. It's fucking, like, brutal. Like, literally fucking pounding him. Um, and she shoots him with... I think it's the cop's gun. I'm not... It's just... I don't know which gun it is. But she shoots the guy, like, twice, I think. Two or three times. He dies. She figures out it's the brother. Then the real... The boyfriend acts like he was tied up in his house. And the cops show up and find him tied up in his house. Which is fucking bullshit now that I think about it. Because he was dead. They thought he was dead. And how would that work? They thought he was dead. And they were all there for like, you know, the crime scene or whatever. The, the Taking the body. Yeah, how does that work? Huh. If they, if they showed up for taking the body. How would that explain? How would he be able to explain that he was trapped in the, the in the fucking closet the whole time if there's pictures of the body and they took the body? Hmm, that's actually a big plot hole that I didn't think about until now. Or maybe I'm just overthinking it. Because he basically, you know, acts like he was the victim locked up in a room and his brother was the one who... Uh, who uh, did all this, you know. And he... No charges against him. 
Um, and, you know, she decides to meet up with him um, because she, I don't know why, I guess just because he would, wouldn't would give up or whatever, I guess that's why. Um, and uh, she goes to the house, his house. Um, they're at like a fancy dinner. It's the, it's actually the first time you really get to hear this guy talk much and like see what his character's like. I mean, you know what he's like just from, you know, like what she is now, like after being with him and all, like what the fuck kind of piece of shit he is. But it's the first time you ever like really see him in action. And he, he comes off as like a very charming guy. He was just kind of apologetic um, towards her, but... You know, you could tell, like, he had little, like, anger things, like, when she was pushing him and shit. Um, and she says, you know, she, she's kind of lying to him, kind of playing with him. Uh, she has a, the whole plan was the cops in a car out near them, and she has a wire. I think he knows she has a wire, because she, she wants, in order for him, or in order for her to commit to him again, and, uh, like, be with him and, and raise his kid and all, she has, she, he has to admit that he's the one who killed uh, her sister and, and punched the girl in the face and shit. Um, and the whole movie, he's been like, anytime, you know, he's done anything, it's been like surprise, like he says surprise. And he's, he, he has like a little dialogue and, and then he says something about surprise and that's like how she knows. And she goes to the bathroom because she's crying and um, you he's just sitting there. I think he's like eating or something. And then suddenly then... He grabs a knife, picks up, and think kills himself, you know. And then she walks out of the bathroom and is like, oh my god! Obviously, she had the fucking other suit, put the suit on, came out, killed him. Um, calls the cops and all. And then when she's not in view of the camera, of like the security camera at his house, walks and sits down on a bench and just kind of like smiles at him while he's bleeding out from the neck. Um, so that a very good ending. Kind of predictable, but very good ending. Um, very good tension. Uh, the movie uh, I'd acted very well as well. The only issue, like the cop and his daughter, were kind of cringy like midway through. But uh, you know, it was just it was empty scenes, really, not really a big deal. When it when it, it was crunch time, the cop was pretty good. But um, and she just you know the main actress again, don't know her name, but she was excellent. Um, the Invisible Man was. Real, like really well done I, I mean i was just imagining one of my friends said it actually was like imagine filming this <laughs> and she's like <laughs> fighting at nothing <laughs> imagine trying not to laugh while filming that um but it was all really well done uh the tension was turned up to 11 in this um uh, in this movie and i i'm gonna finish off giving it an eight like I said, the suspension of disbelief is very high, but it's good enough to kind of waive a lot of the problems with it if it was stupid. or Well, it's kind of stupid, but if it was shitty and not entertaining, um, then it would probably like drop from those things. But I'm kind of waiving them just because I really enjoy the movie. Kind of like Venom, or I'm doing a Venom thing here. I'm not saying the movie's bad, but it's probably not as good as I'm saying it is, but I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. Probably more like a 7.5, maybe a 7, but I'm going to give it an 8 because I really liked it um, personally. So that's what I give uh, The Invisible Man. I wish they didn't reveal uh, that much in the trailer. I, uh, somebody else, a reviewer I, I watch, said it would be great if it was called Invisible and you didn't know the circumstances and maybe they didn't in like zoom in on the fucking uh, suit thing and you knew it was a suit the whole time. Um, it would have been, you know way more uh like what do you think's happening right now and oh it's that you know what i mean like speculation of is he just like a spirit is you know uh I, is it a fucking invisible suit is he is he, he drink some shit that made him invisible you know what the fuck if it's just called invisible you know there's way more possibilities you know instead of just kind of narrowing it down at the very beginning of the movie literally the trailer narrowed it down by calling it the invisible man and pointing out a lot of things that made it obvious. And then, also, the fucking, in the very beginning, literally the first ten minutes, they look at the fucking uh, suit holder, and you're like, uh, okay, it's a suit then. <laughs> um, so, if they got rid of that, it could potentially be even better, like a nine, or a nine and a half. But they didn't, they kind of blew their load early, um, and so that's why I'm going to give it an eight. 
Uh, yeah, so my favorite movie of the year thus far. Hopefully this year is better. The, the, I know the beginning of the year is usually a rough start, um, and it, it picks up. Um, so, you know, this one's going to be my favorite so far. Uh, thank you for watching.